Hello everyone and welcome to week 3 of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights football season where we'll be seeing the Scarlet Knights take on the number 3 ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. Let's get into it. Now first start off with your Rutgers Scarlet Knights who have looked pretty good so far. They've looked better than I expected. They're 1-1 one one with the win over Michigan State and a loss to a ranked Indiana team. I'm not surprised they were going to lose. They lost that game. But they are 1-1. One one. Pass games looked a little questionable so far. Rushing games looked a little questionable besides a few runs from Adams. Pacheco was not able to get anything with the rushing game. The O-line still has not looked great in the rushing game. D-line looked a lot better with Julius Turner and Michael Drum for who have been able to get some good pressure. Secondary and linebacks look decent. Defense is really the strong suit of this team. But it's a little difficult when the offense gets some three and outs. But they've looked a lot better than I thought so far. Okay, now let's get into the opponent, the number three ranked team in the country, the Ohio State Buckeyes. I'm not really going to watch in depth with this matchup because we all know what the outcome is going to be. It's going to be a big Ohio State win, but um, they've looked great so far. Defense hasn't looked great. The offense, the offense has looked almost unstoppable. They've allowed some early game scores to Nebraska, which showed a little bit of questionable, but that's more against an actual good team when they play in the playoffs like Clemson. Or Alabama, they're not going to need to worry about. They're only for Rutgers. Justin Fields looked unbelievable so far. I've been looking really closely at him because that's how I want my favorite team, the New York Giants, to draft in the NFL draft. They have looked unbelievable. They're worth a number three ranking. They're right there with Clemson and Alabama. They're just a great team who are going to completely outbat. Okay, so now on to a best and worst case scenario for Rutgers. Best case scenario, Ohio State comes out like they do, and they've had a few games like Purdue and Iowa a couple of years ago where it's come completely flat and they got upset by those teams. They're not going to get upset by Rutgers. Rutgers comes out great. Let's say maybe the best case scenario, maybe it's like tied at the end of the first quarter. I also pull away and they'll win by 30 and they'll never really bring in like the third strings. That is a absolute best case scenario. It's Ohio State comes out completely flat. After the Penn State game, looking ahead, and they just still win by 30. And a worst-case scenario is a 2016 Michigan. I don't even know about that, but they just get killed by 60. I think they'll score maybe once or twice, but it's like they just get absolutely destroyed against a completely over-talented team. I can't see a Rutgers team giving up. They'll score. They will definitely score at the end of the game, especially against the backups. They're going to show that they can match up against maybe the second, the backups, show an improvement where they were matching up decent with the third strings last year. But yeah, that's a best and worst case scenario. The best case is they lose by 30 and they cover the spread. I think they might cover the spread just because I don't know if Ohio State's going to go hard on them at the end. I just see new Shiano and it's okay between them, I guess. I don't think he'll go, like, against Michigan where it's like he wanted to score 100 points Ryan Day. I think they'll start putting in the second and third things just like last year, really. Maybe Rutgers changes it a little longer because they seem a little more competitive this year. But I still see Ohio State blowing them out easily. And if I had to say what the score would be, I'm going that Ohio State wins something like 49 to 14 or 49 to 10. I think Rutgers will be able to hold them a little bit on defense. Their D-line looks incredibly improved. They have decent linebackers, decent corners. They're going to get completely outmatched, no doubt about it, but they should be a little competitive. The offense looks better. I think they'll pull out some trick plays against Ohio State just to get on the board, get some chunk plays. So, yeah, I think it'll be something around that. It'll be close to the spread because I don't think Ohio State's going to really go hard on Rutgers. That's because they're still horrible. I wouldn't say the bottom of the Big Ten horrible, but they're still bad. And on to some bold predictions, I would say watch the Art Sikowski get some playing time. He's the back quarterback. He was the guy who was a true freshman and threw 12 interceptions or 14, whatever it was. He led NCAA in interceptions. And I'd like to see some big improvements in him. I think... He's a more talented guy than Vedril. I think he has more potential. And if you see him play really well, you might see a little bit more competition in the upcoming week against Illinois. Especially if Vedril starts looking bad against Illinois next week. I think you definitely could see Sikowski come in if he shows that he can play well in like the fourth quarter against the backups or third strings of Ohio State. 
And the second one is I think they actually forced some turnovers. I think Fields might get a little... Okay, this is an easy team. Maybe they force a turnover. They get a little cocky, especially at the beginning of the game. I'll take a turnover maybe in the first quarter by Ohio State just as they get a little too confident and they try and throw something up and they force a turnover. Because Rutgers has a lot of ball ball hawks and they are really want to force turnovers. And I think they can be able to do that. It's just not going to make a difference versus Ohio State. So thank you for watching the video. And I hope to see you next week when I do my predictions for Rutgers versus Illinois. And now that the Pac-12 is back in action, I'll start doing predictions for the New Year's Six Bowls this year. So I will start doing what the playoff and the New Year's Six Bowls would look like if the season ended that week. And then I'll go off my predictions for what I think the playoffs will look at the end of the season. So if you want to see those videos, subscribe. So and turn on notification bells so you know when they come out. Goodbye.